Um, so this is an, another day that we're still outside of China uh, during COVID era, waiting to be allowed back in. At the moment, me and my boyfriend and my child were in Thailand, Chiang Mai. Uh, what I want to tell you about this morning is, so this morning we woke up. I woke up first. I usually wake up first. And I look outside of the house. We happen to be renting. And we have a kind of a veranda or a porch, if that's what you want to call it. And there's this cat. There's this cat fast asleep on the porch. Now, I have six cats at home in China. Six of them. I, I have a cat sitter, a, a local lady from that area in Tianjin. She goes in every day and she she refills their food. She the birds are really loud. She refills their food, she takes care of the, the poop box and she just generally makes sure that they're okay and I pay her an amount daily and I, then I pay her per month. So she's been doing that. So, But I've always had cats, I love cats. And anyway, so I see this, this boy cat fast asleep. He's out, totally out, fast asleep on the veranda. And he's got his back to the door. He's got his back to me. And I see that he has a full tail, a full long tail, and his own set of holes. His, his anatomy is intact. So this means, I'll tell you about the tail, like here in Thailand, usually a cat that is owned or belongs to a family or a house, okay, maybe they have a collar. Um, but if you look at their tails, Often the tail is regular, and then at the end, it looks like it looks. There's a kink there. Uh, some people say that it's genetic. That there's also another belief that that if if something is young and very cute, like a baby or a, well, a baby animal, like like kittens are really cute. The Thai believe that it's so cute that spirits in the area could spirit it off or take it away because it's so adorable so you lose that animal so what they do is they put they break the end of the tail to ensure that it's not perfect anymore and so this will protect it from the spirits taking it away right okay so generally if you see a cat with a collar and a kinked tail or or not the collar, but just a king tail. It means that it belongs, like people associate that animal with them. Or they maybe they feed it, that kind of thing, or it's just in their area, so they're they're looking after it. So this boy, full tail, his own anatomy intact, and he looks. And none of these cats are starving. None of them. None of the strays. So I think he's stray. I think he's stray. Um, and he he's not starving. He's, you know, he's, he looks very healthy fast asleep facing the wall and we have an electric door like we, you, you can click it open and it goes beep and it opens i didn't want to do this i didn't want to open the door and go closer because i knew it would make a beep sound and i, I didn't want to break the spell i didn't want to interrupt him it just looked so peaceful and chilled and i really miss my cats so badly i miss them so badly that when i saw him i'm just like oh i want him to stay as long as possible Anyway, so I was like, oh, patron spirit of cat, cat, catdom has visited us and sleeping, in, you know, on a, <laughs> anyway, he's passed out there and I didn't want to disturb him, but at some point my boyfriend wanted to go out. Now, my boyfriend goes out to a coffee shop like in the mornings to go do stuff. So he was like, well, Jen, I'm going to go out now. Are you going to stop me because of the cat sleeping? And I'm like, no, just go. Okay. So he opened the door. And the cat's like, huh? The cat wakes up and like slowly turns around and looks at us. He looks at the two of us. There's two large humans standing in the doorway. He looks at us and he doesn't move his, his body. He's just like, huh? My, my boyfriend goes out 
of the gate. Cat doesn't move, he just watches him walk away. And then he looks at me and he turns his head back to the wall and falls asleep again. This cat has correctly guessed and ascertained that, well, it's just started raining. This cat has correctly guessed that we are no threat to him. And he's right, we are no threat to him. But the nice, the, the thing that I realized is that a cat that reacts like that is a cat that lives in a society of people. This cat lives in a society of people that do not hurt him. They've never been a threat to him. Even he is a stray, even though he is a stray. People probably feeding him, like, you know, leaving food out. I do. I leave food outside the property, like, you know, extra meat, or whatever. But the people here do that. And it's clear from his reactions that no one has ever thrown a stone at him. No one has ever tried to come up and prod him or poke him or make him do something or try and cage him or, you know, God forbid, put him in a pot kind of thing or kill him or whatever. No one, just looking at his reactions, no one in his whole life, he's an adult, has ever tried to do that to him. Do you know how wonderful that is? What that says about the society. This is Chiang Mai, Thailand. We happen to live in Niman area at the moment. You know what that says about the society? Do you know how civilized that is? Now, I know that like a lot of pe people look at the different countries of the world and they, and they them in grades, you know, like first world, developing world, third world. They don't say second world, they say developing world, right? It's odd. You don't want to be second. <laughs> anyway, so I think, I, I don't think Thailand is, is labeled as first world. I don't think so. It's probably like South, like my country, South Africa. It's probably developing world, right? But I mean, in a lot of countries, how how would it be for a stray animal? Just a stray animal. It's not paying its dues. It's not paying board and rent, room and board, and it's just walking around a location or an area. How would the average stray animal, stray cat, fair in England. Or America. I think America would be okay. People are like, okay, I don't know about England. Maybe, maybe in the countryside they'd be all right. Germany. France. China. God forbid. A country like China. Now, I mean, I think we all know that the, the Chinese culture, Chinese beliefs or policy at the moment, they, they deal with animals in a different way. They think of them in a different way to to other a lot of other countries. Mm. The reason why I actually have six cats is because I have come across cats. Now we've been living in China, and all these cats are like strays from inside China. Every time I've adopted one of these cats, the thought in my mind is, I don't know that I can continue to take care of them all, but, and I don't know if I will always be able to take care of them. Maybe I have to go back to my country, right? And then what? What do I do with all these animals? But my thinking is, at least one year of safety and comfort and love inside our apartments with us is better than a very uncertain life in china when i see cats or when i see stray animals in china even a dog the dogs look unsure the cats are always on the run the cats are perpetually close to terror around humans and maybe they're around like nice humans because there's a lot of lovely Chinese uh, older ladies that I see that actually feed them but then you do get some people who just like oh, I go and poison them because they, they regard them as vermin or something it, it seems to be that there's a lot of thinking in China where if the entity or the, the life form is not paying room and board in some way 
what is it doing there? Because they're seen as a resource. They're not seen as life forms. They're seen as a resource that if it's there and it's just wandering around, you're not using it. You're not using it to to the best, you know, according to your best advantage, you know, like that, in, in that way. Maybe it also comes from, from like 1920s or I don't exactly know the exact years where it happened, but there was a huge famine in the, the early century where millions of Chinese people starved. They didn't have enough food. They, I mean, they were. I remember one one person telling me that they'd try to make. They'd be looking around in the in the grass for things, or even if there was grass, they'd try to eat the grass. So it's sort of like North Korea, but kind of famine style, like lack of food at that time for China. And so basically, if anything was around, if anything with legs or a life or was breathing, it wasn't human, it was walking around outside, that's, that's food. So I think that a lot of that mentality about animals, like you, if you, you see an animal, you should eat it, you should cook it up. If not, if you don't do it immediately, then you keep it in a cage until you can find a use for it. That is very sort of usually older generational Chinese thinking. And it comes from, I think it comes from that period before when they were starving. They didn't have a choice. So when they saw something, they were like, right, get it, keep it or chop it up right now and we'll put it in a soup and find a way of eating every last inch of it. That's also why the Chinese... They don't, uh, like in the Western world, we're kind of spoilt. Like you'll eat the, you'll eat the extremities of the animal, right? The, the, the drumstick, the wings, like of a chicken. The drumstick, the wings, the back, the breasts, the breasts, the, ch the chest, and so on. But we generally stay away from the innards, right? The, the, the guts and the intestines on the inside. We, we kind of, generally we think that's kind of like, Ugh. maybe it's chopped up. Big one. Maybe it's chopped up and put into like stuffing, but generally we don't really go. Oh, I'd like some chopped intestines. Kind of sauce. Mm. We're kind of wasteful that way, actually. If we eat meat, we should be thinking about eating the whole thing and not wasting all that. Right? I guess maybe when at the butchers in Western countries, it's all just taken to a uh, Maybe a sausage factory, all the innards are taken and then it's mashed up and put into a sausage. And then we eat it then, but we don't know. Mm. Anyway, so the Chinese are, are quite economical about that. They eat every part of the animal. They found a way to cook it and eat it. And I think that is generally from, you know, they're being economical because they've had to be. Back in the day, they were starving, they didn't have enough food. So if you saw an animal walking, you find a way to catch it and eat it. And that's why. Um, yeah. So anyway, coming back to this this cat that was so happy and chill, like what struck me was that he just he's a wild stray animal. He's not giving anything back to these people here living in Chiang Mai. These Thai people, but they have allowed him to just walk among them, walk over the land, go into whatever territory he feels like, and he hasn't been bothered. His behavior this morning told me that he's never been scared. He's never been made to feel like he's got to be on the run. He, he doesn't get that, like, you know, that hunched down look and like terror. Oh, God, a human coming. I've got to run. I don't have that here. And I've seen it with, with some other, like, a lot of the dogs, the soy dogs that you see just walking around, free reign. They're not aggressive. They're just on their own mission. They know where they're going. They know what they're going to do. They, they've got a, got a mate up there. They're going to go visit. They know there's a lady over there that hands out scraps or something. They're going to eat that at a certain time. And then they're going to find a, a place to sleep somewhere. You know how nice that is? I don't know. To me, I, I think, you know, like animal and pest control in countries and cities. I understand that they're trying to protect the population of humans in that, that area because they're worried about troops or groups of dogs walking around in packs and menacing and molesting, molesting dogs, molesting people. 
But generally, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the vibe of the people in the area affect the vibe of the of the animals in it. I think there's something in that. My ex, uh, grew up in Russia, and he told me that if you walk around in Russia at that time when he was growing up, the dogs are kind of like. They can be menacing, and many of them can be aggressive. And if you spot them in the street, they, they'll they often start barking at you, like, you know, quite aggressively. And he says the people are similar. The people where he was are similar in that way. They're like, what are you doing in this area? Or in the Russian, what are you doing in this area? I haven't seen you before. Whoa. You know, and, and there's this, like, inherent aggression or like background, like easily, easily brought up aggression, easily, easily triggered aggression, easily triggered aggression. But here in Thailand, mm -mm, people always say Thai people are chill. It's a whole vibe here, like the animals too. That cat didn't run away. He was not in terror. No one has ever hurt him or terrorized him or thrown something at him. Kids are just not like, you know, like in, in some countries, like a boy will like shoot a BB gun in it and people just say, oh, he's just being a boy. He's just being a kid. No, he's being a psychopathic little. People that are cruel to animals when they're growing up are going to be cruel to other life forms and human beings included when they're older. Fact. Look it up. So here, I, the kids play. I, I see the kids are playing. They're on their bikes. They're running around. Maybe they're on their tablets. I never see any cruelty. These people are not cruel. And you know what? That's wonderful. So in terms of like, oh, who's best? Who's who? Do your best respected countries? Really, the first world, developing world, third world. I don't know. Do these people need to get any more developed? I mean, maybe, I don't know, technologically, maybe in a corporate structure, I don't know. But the way they regard life forms and the rest of life out there, they're very live and let live. They are fully aware that, do they know what's ultimately best for every other life form out there? Coming from being a human, us being so superior than others? I mean, are we really? <laughs> maybe we're very clever. But we're not very humane. And we're not very kind, a lot of us. Here, yeah, these animals, the, their reactions are showing me that the people here have an innate respect for life and a, an innate allowance. They just, I mean, the dog's there, the cat's there, something's there. They just let it be. There's, once they, I, I think a lot of people say, think, and then they think, when I see an animal, I need to have a reaction. I, I, I need to have a reaction now. I need to be either scared of it, or I need to chase it away, or I need to do something about it or to it. How about just see it? It exists. And let it be, whether it stays or it walks away. Is it any danger to you? No. Is it stealing your, stealing anything you have? Probably not. Does it smell terribly bad? I don't think so. I haven't picked that up. So this 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 feeling of allowance. It's just wonderful. It's really, really wonderful. And I think we need to give more I'm I am i am usually talking about respect, right? Respect where respect is due. Let's give Thailand the respect they, they deserve with regard to Respect for life. Respect for life. They're, they're doing something right here that the rest of us could really learn from. Respect Thailand. Nice one.